in this module you will study about resonance have you ever wondered how radio picks certain frequencies so that you can play your favorite channel or why does a glass break down in an orchestra concert have you ever felt a bridge vibrating when you walk on it what is the reason for all these the answer lies in the phenomenon of resonance well what is this a swing and you all must have enjoyed on it now during the swing you keep pushing it and we have already talked about it that all swings will have some natural frequency now you must have experienced in a swing that when the timing of your push exactly matches with the time period of the swing your swing gets the maximum amplitude this amplitude is large if the frequency of the external force is equal to the natural frequency of the body what i mean to say is that a swing has a particular frequency and when you push then you are applying a force that means you force the swing to swing with the force frequency of the force which you apply and it might happen that the frequency of your applied force becomes equal to the frequency of the swing then the amplitude of the forced vibrations or the oscillations why force because you were applying a force to it of the body becomes quite large this phenomena is called resonance thus resonance is a particular case of forced vibrations or oscillations when the frequency of the periodic driving force is equal is equal to the natural frequency of the object so remember that when you talk of vibrations what is forced vibrations when the body vibrates with the frequency of applied force when the natural frequency of the body and the frequency of applied force are equal then the body will vibrate with a large amplitude and that phenomena is known as resonance so you will remember that resonance is a particular case of forced vibration it is a case of forced vibrations when the frequency of the periodic driving force is equal to the natural frequency of the object now let's talk and observe simple illustration of free force and resonant vibrations now over here you can see a set of five pendulums right and i hope you remember that the frequency of the pendulum will be equal to 1 upon the time period that means and time period is equal to 2 pi l upon g so basically the frequency of the pendulum will be inversely proportional to the length that is not important over here but what i mean to say the frequency will depend upon the length of the pendulum so here five pendulums 1 2 3 4 5 are suspended from a thin cord and you can observe that the lengths of the pendulum 1 this is pendulum 1 and this is pendulum 
they are equal the lengths are equal so if the lengths are equal children then what will happen the frequency will be the same so the frequencies are also equal now length of length of this fourth one is greater than second and third you can observe over here it is four is longer than second second and third and it is slightly shorter than the fifth one so the length of four is slightly greater than that of second and third and is slightly smaller than one and five so their frequencies will be different from frequency of pendulum one so if we compare the pendulums with respect to pendulum one then pendulum one and pendulum four will have same frequency whereas pendulum two three and five this pendulum two three and five will have frequencies different from frequencies of one and four now when pendulum one is set into oscillations this pendulum is set into oscillation now they all are hung on the uh, same uh, rod so obviously they all should vibrate the pendulums 2 3 4 and 5 experience a periodic force of frequency equal to that of one so when this pendulum one is set into vibrations then the pendulums 2 3 4 and 5 will also start vibrating but they will experience a force which will be equivalent to the frequency of pendulum 1 so they will be set into forced oscillations it will be observed that pendulums 2 3 and 5 that means the pendulums whose lengths are different from 1 and 4 or 1 so i repeat the pendulums 2 3 and 5 whose natural frequencies are different from the frequency of 1 execute forced vibrations with small amplitude but the amplitude of forced oscillations of the pendulum 4 goes on increasing slowly and becomes equal to the amplitude of 1 these oscillations are resonant oscillations so basically why we had said that this example is indicating all three vibrations so when you set pendulum 1 into oscillations it vibrates with its natural frequency and executes what is known as free vibrations now due to the vibrations of pendulum 1 these all pendulums are set into oscillations but the natural frequency of 4 coincides with the frequency of 1 so this will be set into forced vibrations but since the vibrations frequencies are same this 4 will be in resonance with 1 whereas 2 3 and 5 will execute forced vibrations over here you can observe these pendulum pendulums how they are being set into vibrations and you can observe which one are vibrating in phase with one another their amplitudes are large and Now let's see or discuss resonance with tunic forms. Resonance can be de demonstrated by the help of two tunic forks of same frequency. Now, if the prongs of the tunic fork have the same length, obviously in the same material, they will have same frequency also. 
two tunic forks are mounted upon two separate sound boxes such that their open ends face each other. So here you can observe that this is one sound box and this is another sound box. Over here, this is an hollow. This is an hollow space. Over here, this hollow space and these hollow spaces are facing each other. And here, we, there is one tuning fork mounted and this is another tuning fork with, which is mounted. So, the main thing is that the sound boxes are, with their open ends are facing each other. When one of the tuning fork is struck, that means you can strike either this one or this one. So, over here you can observe that this tuning fork is struck. When it is struck, what will happen? The tuning fork will be set to vibrations. It is observed that the other tuning fork starts vibrating and a loud sound is heard. Now, see children, what will happen? This tuning fork will be set into vibrations. So will be this sound box and the air. These vibrations will be communicated to the other sound box and then this whole setup will be set into vibrations. But since the frequency of the tuning fork, this one and this one is the same. So, it will start vibrating in resonance with each other and produce a loud sound. This happens because the sound waves from first tuning fork forces a resonant vibrations in the second tuning fork. You can observe over here, when the prongs are the same, then they both vibrate. But when the prongs are different, then the second tuning fork does not resonate with the first one. Now, let's talk about resonance in air column. Vibrations of air column can be set up in a resonance column apparatus. So, this is a apparatus in which we can set up, uh, observe resonance in air column. So, basically the, the apparatus is a long metal tube held vertically in a tall jar containing water. And above water, there is air. This tube can be fixed in vertical position. The length of the air column can be raised by raising or lowering the tube. That means when we move the tube up and down, the amount of water in the tube also changes. So, the length of air column also changes. So, you can observe this length of air column can be varied. So, over here you can see that over here like if you have a, a tube, this is the length of the air column. Over here, here the length of the air column has been changed by raising the tuning fork up. But otherwise what we can do is we can change this quantity of water over here. We can lower the quantity of water. Then also the length of air column will increase. When the frequency of waves in the air column becomes equal to the natural fuse frequency of the tunic fork, a loud sound is produced in the air column. So, children, what happens is that you have a tube you, the, which is filled with water. And when the tunic fork is over here, this tunic fork vibrates, right? And it will set this air column into vibrations that means the air column is vibrating and if frequency of tunic fork becomes equal to the frequency of the length of air column then it will start vibrating with large amplitude and a loud sound will be heard. So, this will happen only and only when the frequency of the tunic fork 
becomes equal to the frequency of the length of air column. Another thing, have you heard a rattling sound when some vehicle is driven? Any kind of vehicle, let's say a motorcycle when you're driving, the frame starts rattling or the frame of some old cars or trucks, etc. Now, children, when a vehicle is driven, the piston of the engine executes to and fro motion. So, remember that the piston of the engine executes to and fro motion. At the same time, frame or some part of the vehicle also may vibrate. So, that means when a vehicle is driven, if the piston is also executing vibratory motion and some part of the vehicle, the frame or any other part may also start vibrating. Now, at a particular speed, the natural frequency of vibrations of the frame of a vehicle and frequency of the piston of the engine of the vehicle might be same. So, what we are trying to say is that when a vehicle is being driven, then it might happen that the frequency of the piston of the engine of the vehicle is equal to the natural frequency of the frame. Then, the frame obviously will start vibrating with large amplitude and we will say that the resonance has occurred and a ra loud rattling sound is produced. Now, how can you eliminate this rattling sound? Now, this rattling sound had arisen because the vehicle was being driven at a particular speed. So, what can be done? The driver needs to change the speed of the vehicle. So, children, when the speed of the vehicle changes, obviously, the frequency of the piston of the engine will change and it will not match with the fre natural frequency of the frame. So, they will not be in resonance and the rattling sound will go away. Turning a radio, which we started our lesson with this only. It's a very interesting example of electrical resonance. Now, when we turn the knob of a radio, you always set channels by turning the knob or changing even um, uh, setting band frequencies. So, when we turn the knob of a radio to tune a station, we are changing the natural frequency of the electrical circuit of the receiver to make it equal to the transmission frequency. That means when we turn the knob, we see to it that the frequency of the receiving station and the incoming frequencies, they become equal. They are same of the radio station. So, when the two frequencies match, energy absorption is maximum and only that station is heard. So, at a particular point, you hear a particular station and when you turn it, then you can hear another station because you have matched them in this manner. Let's see some other examples of resonance which occur in our surroundings. Soldiers passing over a suspension bridge always break steps. That means when the soldiers, marching soldiers have to cross bridge, they are asked to break steps because if the frequency of the march happens to coincide with the natural frequency of the bridge, the bridge may be set into oscillations with large amplitude and collapse. So, it might happen when the soldiers are marching, then the frequency of their steps may coincide with the natural frequency of the bridge, then the bridge obviously will be set into oscillations of large amplitude and it will collapse. So, they are always asked to break steps. Similarly, if the frequency of revolution of the wheels of a train passing over a bridge coincides with the natural frequency of the bridge, then due to resonance, the bridge 
may be set into oscillations of large amplitude and there is a chance of its collapsing. For the same reason, an earthquake will not cause uniform damage to all buildings in an affected area. Even if they are built with the same strength and materials. The natural frequency of a building depends on its height and other size parameters and the nature of building materials. So that means each building will have a different frequency. The one with its natural frequency close to the frequency of seismic wave is likely to be damaged more. So that is why the earthquake will not cause uniform damage. Now, have you ever heard your window panes rattling when an aeroplane passes your rooftop? So you might have observed that the glass window panes vibrate or may even break when an aeroplane passes over the building. So, what is happening at that time? So, the frequency of the movement of the aeroplane might become equal to the frequency of the window panes. Then, the window panes start vibrating with a large amplitude and then they might break up. Now, let's sum up all the vibrations. First, we did was free vibrations. The periodic vibrations of a body of constant ampli amplitude in the absence of any external force on it are called free vibrations. For example, striking a tuning fork by rubber, hard rubber pad produces free vibrations. Damped vibrations. The periodic vibrations of a body of decreasing amplitude in the presence of resistive force are called damped vibrations. For example, a simple pendulum oscillating in air or tuning fork vibra vibrating in air executes damped vibrations. Forced vibrations. The vibrations of a body which takes place under the influence of an external periodic force acting on it are called forced vibrations. For example, when the stem of a vibrating tunic fork is pressed on the top of a table, the tunic fork forces the table top to vibrate with its own frequency. Resonance Resonance is a special case of forced vibrations. When the frequency of an externally applied periodic force on a body is equal to its natural frequency, the body starts vibrating with an increased amplitude. This phenomenon is called resonance and the vibrations of large amplitude are called resonant vibrations. Condition for resonance. Resonance occurs when the frequency of applied force is exactly equal to the natural frequency of the vibrating board. So children, basically, when a body is able to vibrate with its natural frequency, then there are free vibrations. But since there is always friction around, so the vibrations, amplitude of the vibrations keeps on decreasing and it turns into damped vibrations. But if the free vibrations force some other object to vibrate, for example, a tunic fork forces the table to vibrate, then the table executes forced vibrations because it is forced to vibrate with the frequency of the tunic fork. And resonance will occur only and only when the force vibrations become equal to the natural vibrations. When the frequency of force vibration and frequency of the natural frequency of the body are equal, then it, a resonance phenomenon takes place.